Good evening. Please stand with me as we sing. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for this evening that we can come to gather in your house tonight to come to your table, the table that you have prepared for us to remind us to always remember what you've done on our behalf. This Christmas, as we come to this table, we, may we be mindful that you gave your all, that you were born to die for us, for our well-being, to redeem us, to become sons and daughters of your kingdom. Lord, I pray tonight that you be with each and every one of us. May we just fill, uh, be filled with awe. May we just be filled with the mystery of Christmas. May we have just this peace in our hearts and the calmness of this moment. We pray that you can move among us in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated for just a moment. Um, we're actually, this is kind of a quiet, solemn uh, service. I had the Carters ask me if I bought this jacket for tonight. No, I bought this about seven years ago when I started doing white Christmases. So I get to wear this once a year, and I really feel for you Navy guys. I do not know how you keep your uniforms clean. So, um, but anyway, welcome to White Christmas. I'm glad you're here with us tonight, and it's intended to be all is bright, all is calm, all is well with your soul, I hope, this evening in this Christmas season. Uh, we are going to greet one another in just a moment. Before you do that, I want to welcome you here tonight. If you're our guest tonight, there's a detachable portion of your program. If between now and the end of service you can detach that, fill that out, there's a black box in the foyer. I'd ask you to put that in there right by the staircase. Let us know you're with us. Home folk, if you need to communicate anything to me, you can fill that out on there. Put any prayer requests or anything that you need to communicate. Uh, all the announcements that are coming up for the Christmas season are in your program, so you can take that with you as a reminder for everything. And also we remind you that tonight, because it is the Lord's Supper, as you leave, there will be a benevolent offering. That offering goes completely to benevolence that we do for our food pantry and to help people in our community. So at the end of service, when you leave, if you see the deacons back there with, uh, with a, a plate, that's because they're taking up uh, for, the, for the benevolence. So if you can give graciously to that tonight, that would be great. So again, I want to thank you for being here tonight. Let's read the front of our program today. It says, but when the kindness of God, our Savior, and his love for mankind appeared... He saved us not by works of righteousness of that we had done, but according to his own mercy. So as we sing these songs tonight, let's just be grateful for what God has done to us. Before we do that, though, stay right where you're at, unless you're like, this side's like light, this side's kind of full, and this side's heavy. Just make sure you greet people right around yourself. Meet somebody you don't know. Tell somebody you're glad to see them here tonight.
Very good. All right, if I can have you return to your seats. Now, you don't have to sit. When I say return to your seats, you're going to stay standing. And we're going to sing. We just talked about it. You can surely sing three songs standing. O come, all you faithful, silent night. And O come, O come, Emmanuel.
Amen. You may be seated. As we come to the table uh, tonight, uh, let us be mindful that this is an open table. So if you are a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ and you're here in this room, we would welcome you to take uh, communion with us this evening. As we come, and the purpose of communion should be to, one, make sure we remember it's Jesus Christ, that it is his table, that he has died for our sins, that he has shed his blood, that his body was broken on our behalf, and that we come with that belief in Christ Jesus. So may we do so in a worthy manner, make sure our hearts are right with the Lord and with our fellow man to the best of our possibilities that we can. So tonight, um, I wanted to talk about Christmas at the table, and I have a few things I want to read to you. And so the scripture is a different verse than normally we wouldn't think of. It's coming from Isaiah. But when we're at the table, this is Jesus' story. Whenever we come to the Lord's Supper, this is about him. This is how he weaves us into his story also. So as we come to this table, it's, it's where we meet him. This is where we meet the Lord. This is where we come to remember him. This is where we come to have him change our lives. And so if you're in here tonight and you've not met the Lord, tonight you can. If you're in here tonight and you've come for whatever reason, it should be that I want to get closer to Jesus tonight. I want to be more intimate with him. I want, to, I want to remember him and what he's done for me. And did you know that he is here with us in our ups and downs? By the way, whatever season you're in right now at Christmas, whether this is an, an up or down time for you, this table's for you. Whatever it might be, whether it's celebrating or whether it's dealing with something, some sorrow in your life or some pain in your life or sin in your life, this is what the table of the Lord is for. So as we talk about the Christmas table, I want us to sit at this table tonight with Jesus. May we experience the Holy Spirit's hospitality tonight as he ministers to us as we encounter Christ. I thought about this. I went back in my notes and thought about all the times that Jesus would literally come to a table to meet people. Did you know it was a place of equality with him? He never looked down at the people at the table. Even the one that was going to betray him, Jesus was still right there at the table with him. Whatever table it was, whether it was a tax collector or whether it was a sinner or whether it was out in the field breaking fish and, and loaves and spreading it around, Jesus came to the table intimately with a conversation, with teaching, with honesty, and with truth. The table is a place where we connect with each other. And think about, uh, I know the family table is not the same as it used to be in traditions past, but it should still be a place where we can come together to connect. And this is a time for the family of God to come together to connect. In Jesus' day, the table didn't look like this. It didn't look like tables that we sit around. It was more rectangular, and they reclined around it. They, they laid down. I would choke on my food. I don't know about you, but they would lay down, and they would, they would eat, and they had pillows and different things around and reclined uh, next to each other. And uh, we have chairs and, and tables that we sit at. So it's not the same concept, but it's still the same principle. It may not be the same exact table. And so may we come to the table where we eat food. And we're Baptists, we eat food, amen? So we, we come to this table to take of this bread, though, in a symbolic way that it's his body and his blood for us. And our customs are that we carry this on until he returns. Jesus ministered at the table to the following. Listen to this. It was a place of blessing where he fed 5,000 people in a field. It was a place of miracles at the wedding of Canaan when he did not want the bride and the groom to be embarrassed, so he turned water to wine. It was a place of forgiveness where he met Matthew, the tax collector, and called him to come follow him to be his disciple. It was a place of remembrance where he trained his disciples and even trained us to do what we're about to do tonight so that we could always remember him. It was a place of healing. It was a place of encouragement. It was a place on the road of Emos where he made them remember the gospel story that on the third day, the Christ would rise again. This is about the kingdom of God. This is about us joining him. This is about us accepting him and him accepting us. But you know what this is also about? Is us accepting one another. Tonight in this room, accepting each other as brothers and sisters in Christ, that we're equal, that God loves us all the same, that Christ died for us, that Jesus came for us. It says he came to redeem, redeem all of us from the sin of the law, that we, we, we can't do it on our own, but only through Christ, so that we can be sons and daughters. So may this table display a kingdom tonight, 
a kingdom of remembrance. May it be a place where we celebrate Christ's birth because it's Christmas time. May it be a place where we come together as family and friends to partake of the one thing that Christ has given us to continue on until he returns. And then he's got another promise. When we get into heaven, there's a marriage table where we will all eat with the feast of the Lamb of God and partake with him. He's never partaken it since he's left this earth, but he waits until we meet him in heaven where he will partake with all of us at one time. That's not 5,000. That's not 4,000. I, I don't even know how many millions that will be. But what a day that will be when we take this in heaven with him. Until then, we celebrate his birth, we celebrate his life, and we do this in remembrance of Christ. May our Christmas table remind us that everyone is welcome to join in this feast. May it re remind everyone that all people are welcome and invited to this table so that they too might know the Lord Jesus Christ. And in this moment, for each of us that are believers, may it be a moment where we grow closer to the Lord Jesus Christ. Will you pray with me for just a moment? Lord God, I come to you in the name of Jesus, and I ask you to prepare that table for us now. In Isaiah, the scripture says that on this mountain, the Lord of armies will prepare for all his people a feast of choice meat, a feast with aged wine, of prime cuts, of choice meat, and a fine vintage wine. Lord, today may we be on that mountain, nothing but the best with you as we declare the victory of your, of your death, burial, and resurrection, but also as we celebrate your birth. Tonight, in a moment, as Shawnetta and Samuel are going to play, may we meditate in our own hearts to make sure that we come to this table in a worthy manner. May we make sure that we realize that all are welcome here, every single one of us. And as we come to this table, may we find forgiveness. May we find mercy. May we find grace. And may we experience your love. In Jesus' name, amen. Please bow your heads and meditate as they play. We prepare for this. If you're watching online, you can also take the elements with us. And if you do not pick up one of the little packs before you came in and you would like to take it, if you would raise your hand so a deacon can bring one to you at this time. Does anybody not have the Lord's Supper at once to take it? Okay. Seeing none, then we will go ahead. On the night in which Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread and he broke it. He blessed it. And he said that this was his body to take and eat in remembrance of him.
And on the night also in which he was betrayed, he took the cup and he blessed the cup. And he said that this was the new covenant, that this is the blood that's the remission of our sins. And he said, drink in remembrance of him. Lord Jesus, we thank you for this table, your table, the Christ table. The table that reminds us of all aspects from your birth to your life, to your death, to your burial, to your resurrection. The hope that we have in the gospel, the unity that we have with you, the peace that we have with you. So that this table we can come as sinners just like Matthew the tax collector, just like Zacchaeus ate with you, just like those in the field that ate the loaves of bread and fish, just like those on the shoreline when you had been resurrected and and Peter ran to you on the beach and you had breakfast with him. Lord, how many intimate moments that you share in the scriptures and how many times now your people throughout all centuries have come to this table. Lord, may we never forget. May we never forget what this table's for. May we never cease to understand your love, your amazing love for us. That you would come to die for us. That you would be born for this purpose. That in the fulfillment of all times, as the scripture tells us, that the Son, Jesus Christ, came, born of a woman, Mary, to redeem us of our sins. May tonight, this Christmas table, remind us of all that you gave us, and it began on Christmas morn. Lord, may we leave this place tonight as we sing our final closing song, O Little Town of Bethlehem. May we remember that it all began here, but it goes on. Now it's even at Lexington Park. And wherever we may go in our lives, we take the gospel with us. We take your love and your forgiveness and your grace and your mercy. Tonight as we leave this place, may, may we hug someone's neck or tell somebody we're glad to see them. And may we just minister to one another and be here for each other. And may we remember that at this table, the ground is level, and we're all welcome to your table. All we have to do is call upon your name. And Jesus, we pray this in your name. And all of God's people said, amen. Let's stand and sing a little town of Bethlehem.
Amen. I hope you've been blessed by coming here tonight. This is just intended to be a short service to really just usher in the Christmas season with a peaceful experience that we could share together. I want to encourage you. Who here has seen Home Alone? Raise your hand. Do you know even in Home Alone, all that that little kid went through, he still made it to church? So I am glad that you have followed his examples and you did not let a little rain keep you from church. So just remember that. If that kid in home alone can make it to church, you can always make it to church. So I hope to see you. We have Wednesday night service. We do have here at, at uh, 5 o'clock, we have birthday party with Jesus. It's a pizza party. It's uh, wh whatever the cost is, $6 or whatever it is a person. And we'll have birthday cake. We'll have Jesus there and St. Nick will give us testimony. And uh, then it will have our Bible study groups after that. And then Sunday morning, we hope to see you back here at 10 a.m. for worship as we continue our Advent season. Let me end in a blessing. May the Lord God bless you and keep you. May he cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May he lift his counts upon you and give you his peace. Go in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.